Hello again, Rubber Band here, and today I'm going to be going over some impressioning, which is kind of sort of the thing that I've become most known for in the Locksburg community, given that I was evangelizing a tool I had made and designed. So what I'm going to be doing today is kind of waxing rhetoric about what I find useful, why I like it so much, uh, tips on tools and such, and just uh, kind of doing some rambling at large. So um, in my day-to-day -day as a professional locksmith, uh, impressioning is something that comes up either frequently or infrequently, but uh, it's something that I started to like essentially right away, because once I have made a key to something, I didn't have to pick it again. I'm not a great picker, but I thought that I was pretty good at impressioning, and it was something that kind of seemed to come naturally to me. So, um, like most locksmiths, my initial journey started with locking pliers or vice grips. Um, mine are all out in toolkits now, and they're not really involved in my impressioning day to day. But what I do have is my very first impressioning tool that I had with that designed purpose in mind, and that's this. This is the ProLock LT700, and um, this is a very good introductory impressioning grip for a number of reasons. One, that it's light. Um, it's all plastic, uh, and then just the aluminum jaw to hold the key. So um, it being light is really good because it kind of... Uh, diminishes the opportunity for you to break the key blank just by the weight of the handle. And also it has excellent feedback given that it's rigid and uh, rocking tends to uh, transmit pretty uh, well throughout this handle. Uh, I have an oddly shaped hex key because I liked how that I could put this in here and tighten it or like this. And uh, it made mine stand out from the other people that I worked with. There's a couple of, I guess, uh, modifications that you can make to this to make it a little better. And one of those things is that you can, uh, one second, I'm trying to find the actual bolt for it. This is just kind of, uh, if I had a seat of my pants here. that's okay because while I am a professional locksmith, I am not a professional videographer. So let's see, do I have the right one here? I do. So you can actually take a quarter 20 machine screw and you can make a post. And I copied this idea from Holly, who is uh, one of my impressioning mentors and who is substantially faster than me at impressioning. Um, and I would defer to her in most of these pieces of advice, even though we have a little different approach in how to set things up. But I did take this idea from her for the ability to isolate your motions so you can do your, uh, your binding and rocking separate rather than doing this and having to rock. That uh, was quickly one of the things that um, I learned that I would want to adapt into the tool that I eventually made. So we've got this great tool. Um, I kind of really dived into the, the bat cave, so to speak, with impressioning tools. And I was like, well, this one's good, but could it be done better? And then I got this. This is the Freeman impressioning grip. And uh, it has an adjustable collet that you just tighten this down and it will clamp your key blank and it will, uh, it'll just hold on to it. There's two cone point set screws that really dig into your key blank and grip it. The only problem, not easy to do that modification for the post. So you're kind of stuck turning and rocking with, uh, the, the same hand, so to speak, you can't isolate the two motions. And uh, it's heavy. It's really heavy. This is steel. This is aluminum. Big knurled knob. And then when you tighten this, it leaves the collet tightened unless you use the thrust bearing, like least, 
I believe does it this way. Somebody in the, no, not least. But anyway, somebody in uh, my impressioning server added a thrust bearing behind here and it seems to make this easier, but you gotta do that to pop it open and release your key blank. So there's that one, which is good. It's still a good grip. Um, I used this for automotive for a long time, like for five pin Ford and stuff, which uh, you, can, you can really abuse those locks. They're really, really robust. Uh, this was really good for that. And then um, I was like, well, I'm going to try out all the grips that I can. So I got this next. That's the HPC Clean Grip, CGIT10, uh, which is the part number. Um, and this thing just takes the cake for just heavy, super heavy. This whole thing is steel. And the way that you would attach a key, you know what? Maybe I'll just do that as part of this. Um, you've got to unthread this, this pin. Um, I've got a Ford blank that I'm going to use here. So you put it down here in the jaw. You tuck this pin through, and then you just slowly tighten this up. And then it, in this cone, it will orient your key properly. So it, there's not much drift. Uh, you can kind of get that binding, rocking separation. Uh, I believe Deviant Olam... I'm probably mispronouncing his name, uh, autodidact there, but uh, he he likes this grip. Um, I'm not a big fan. It's a little too heavy for my purposes, but it does mean that you can turn and just let the weight of this handle do the work itself, which can be useful. Not for me, though. Not for me. Uh, if we've chatted before, um, if you're watching this, I have probably mentioned that I have chronic hand pain. It makes uh, picking and uh, like really heavy hand tool use uh, painful after a while. So I've got to do what I can to kind of move around that. So uh, I'll show you how this clamps. So you just turn this and you call it. And it... so see it. Uh, it doesn't grip this very well because these are. It's got a big hole for the cone set screws to get in. So I'd have to grip it somewhere else. So um, let me grab another key blank and I can show you with that. This is more of a free form video rather than something I think a bunch of people are going to watch. Me rambling might be appealing to only just a couple of people. HV Logic, I'm looking at you. Um, Okay, then you would want to center this straight up and down as much as you could. You want it to kind of be in line with the handle and then just really reef it down. And then these set screws that are in here are cone point and they dig in there and make it pretty hard for something to move. And then to get it out, you loosen that and pop it out. And then, um, oop, there it goes. We've got the Pro lock. I'll use the same one because this is gonna. This is more in line with a house key, which or other key. So it can it can do everything. So once you get that here, I like to just tighten it down. You can go right here and kind of just helicopter around. And there, it doesn't move. You got your isolation, and then. Um, Towards the end there, I'm going to go over cost about like what each of these would run typically. And uh, that'll be a, a big part of it because the initial buy-in, so to speak, for impression can be kind of uh, overwhelming. Um, I wanted to be versatile with my impressioning. So I eventually got this. This is another ProLock tool. This is for impressioning tubular keys. It's not self-impressioning. This You put a key blank in. You have a square file that goes in these notches and you whittle them away just like you would an edge cut key. I've used it before. It's pretty useful for ACE2 and uh, pretty much any seven pin tubular lock that, that isn't like pin and pin or anything, but it's, it's pretty useful. I like it. There's do-it-yourself stuff. So there's a tool that you can get from Harbor Freight or other, like uh, Alibaba or any of the other importers where you, uh, it's a windshield removal tool and there's a handle 
and this handle would normally have a blade stuck in here. You can take this handle, you can take a hacksaw, you can cut this down. You don't have to add the chamfer or anything, but you can. And then um, you just drill and tap two holes and this can hold your key blank too. Um, and then if you're enterprising, you can cope a little piece of aluminum, knurled piece of aluminum and get it in there. I did not make this. I know how it's made. So um, this, uh, this one's pretty good. I've used it before. It uh, is surprisingly good. The aluminum is very light. It holds things pretty well, but it's got four set screws and that can make it tedious to kind of like set up because if uh, you're a competitive impressioner and uh, I've, I've competed before, I wouldn't say that I'm competitive, you know, I'm not at every convention or anything, but you, you want to, your handle to be set up pretty quick. So, um, and then I got this one. This is from Safe Ventures in the UK, which I got because it looked really pleasant. It's really well made. They do uh, great work there. We've got two set screws in here to hold the key blank, and then it's just pushed against a slightly recessed drilled surface inside of the jaw. Holds things pretty well, and it holds the uh, the Allen, or rather the, the hex key in here. And um, depending on the key blank, you could even couple, keep a little bit of that in there. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of sandpaper in here just stuff to prep my key blank. And uh, I think that would probably make this tool pretty versatile. Um, but yeah, overall, super well made. Um, gotta set it up just right to get that in there. But uh, really like this one. This is just strictly part of like, I collect impressioning handles, give them a try. Um, trying to be as objective as possible here. And then another one I got is this. This is a pole style impressioning handle. And um, I'll show you how this guy gets set up because it confused me. This is 100% different from the norm. So, um, you know, you might think it goes on here, but it doesn't, it does not. Uh, this thing just digs into it. So you clamp it up in here and then you can uh, get that little hole. Uh, so this nub right here on this plate goes in the keyhole or the, the yeah, the key, the keyhole. Um, let's say, where's my nomenclature at? So, all right. And then you want to back it up until this bit is just in front or rather the shoulder is just in front of this bit and you just clamp it down. So when you get this in the lock, you would turn a little bit and then you pull the trigger and it pushes the key back. So it will bind against the cut and you just file behind the mark each time is kind of how it was explained to me. I've used this successfully maybe once, but it was important for me to try it because um, I am searching for the best way to impression. Um, I haven't found it yet, but searching. All right. And that led me to my, uh, my search for building a better mousetrap. I knew what I wanted in an impression handle. So you might have noticed these are all pretty big. They're pretty chunky. And uh, they're not able to really be carried in a pick case or anything. I'm just tightening this up. I don't like it just hanging out. And uh, I kind of wanted something like that I could fit in with my everyday carry, which is a cornball term, but it's something, you know, as a locksmith, I like to be prepared for most of the lock things that I might come against without having to run back and grab a bunch of extra tools. So that led me to designing my own. And, um, that meant prototyping. You know, I've, uh, I'm not a super inventor or anything, but I did find a master lock or it's intended for master lock, but it's not made by them. So I will go 
over that part here in just a moment. So, um, Major Manufacturing, which is a locksmith tool company, or rather tool-oriented company, makes a staking tool for the Master Up series, or Universal Pin. Basically, you put a key in this weird lock, uh, you put the tool over the key, you smack it with a hammer, and then it's keyed to that. Uh, they're garbage locks, and I don't like them. They, fa they fail all the time, but it provided me the means to uh, have something that would fit around a Kibo. Already had the slot cut. I'm not a machinist. And all I would have to do is drill and tap some holes, and then I did. And there it is. There's a pretty substantial size difference between this and the other tools. So I was concerned, am I going to be able to generate enough force with this thing? Is it going to be consistent enough? And um, all of that kind of just needed to be tested in order to be proven. So I wanted the ability to be able to isolate uh, the rocking from the lifting. And there was really only one way to do that. And that's to give it a post, a side post. So I did. We have a side screw here. This threads in. And uh, these are all 1 8 drive. So um, I did a lot of testing with this before I ever thought about having a batch professionally made. And uh, it, uh, it works great. Uh, I, in fact, I do carry my prototype over the other ones that I had made in my everyday, uh, simply because, um, I'm not going to be super upset if I lose this one. Um, the other ones, you know, given that they're a physical manifestation of the progress of the tool, uh, I would be upset. So without further ado, um, I, uh, I lied, I guess, because I carry this one and I carry this one in a little bag in my change pocket and there's one side screw and there it's that way for a couple reasons one this is the one of the prototypes the finished prototypes that uh not sure or hazard in the lock picking discords is known he made these he's my machinist and he does great work and he uh this was one of the first runs so the screws are pretty far apart which makes it hard to hold on to like master number seven keys. They're pretty small. So um, I would inevitably kind of defer to this one for that. Uh, in fact, in the field, I probably use this one more just because I, I know it a lot more intimately than these ones. I've got a lot more field time. So slot is pretty long. Um, probably didn't need to be nearly that long. I don't really know any Kibos that take up that much space, but I did kind of follow this. Uh, this used to have the a little cone point on it. I cut that off with a little spindle cutoff tool that I use for safe spindles. So it's uh, it's flat now. And uh, I just, where it was shiny steel, I just covered with Sharpie. So uh, the very definition of a do-it-yourself. So this was great. And then um, the very first professionally batch, I wanted it to be oxidized and I wanted it to look professional, like all the parts of a professional tool. And here it is. So you may ask, what's the difference? This was oxidized, or rather it still is. But um, I have used it so much that I have worn a lot of the oxidizing off, or rather a lot of the oxide off. And it just kind of looks like one of the prototypes now. So uh, I like that it kind of has that wear. This is a resin 3D printed sleeve. Uh, this was made for the metric handles and uh, to be different from the Imperial. So you can see the screw. Uh, there's fiber washers in here and this is coped. These were serialized for the first batch and uh, everybody that bought one, I can't be more thankful to you because um, it, it was really something that I was very proud of. Um, and here's another one of the prototypes. Um, it was, you know, kind of choppy. It's got the imperial sleeve and then the really distant screws so we've got here and then the two prototypes and then we have the 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 this so this is also the first gen because uh the distant screws then we did gen two 
and here it is. I have not used this one. This is serial number 000. This one's mine. And uh, oxide intact. We've got serialized uh, sleeve. Really nicely done. It's got kind of like this faux wood grain because of a little baseball bat. And uh, the screws are much shorter together and the slot is shorter. So it's much easier to accommodate smaller keys. I haven't started using this one because I have found ways to make these other ones work. And this is just the one that hangs out and uh, looks pretty. It's, you know, like my showboat. Speaking of looking pretty, uh, I am very proud of this tool. Um, for many reasons, uh, you know, it's given me a lot of feedback about impressioning, uh, like what I could do to improve, uh, just gen general feedback from the community. A lot of people seem to like the handle. Um, I tried to make it affordable. They're set, they were $75. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, initial upstart was not that affordable, but you know, you, you got to pay for time, you know, especially if you're not making stuff yourself. But anyway, uh, long story short, I told you that story to tell you this story. I had a special one made in titanium. So this is a Gen 2, the closer slots, um, then uh, rather uh, closer together screws, the slot is shorter. And then um, I use this shoulder screw. These are expensive, but uh, I thought it, that it matched the appearance a little better. So um, there's a few features that I liked about my handle. So one is I designed, I intended for it to be modular. So there is a threaded post at the back that you can use to either store this screw. So um, you can just store it back there, or if you want to carry a couple of screws, you can actually use this to extend the handle. So if you had, say, another screw, and then you had this one, and you wanted to generate a little more torque, you could use just the screw, or you could 3D print something to go over the back to not increase the weight too much, but could give you like an ex a firm extension and it could pack down. You know, this can fit into a, a small pocket or like a pit case or a small tool bag or anything like that. And you know, a couple of screws doesn't really take up all that much more room. So um, I have not had too much more to do with the modular parts. That's coming up in a future project that I'm working on with uh, Nosu. So all of these are just how you start gripping a key. And uh, that's important for the first half. Like you need to be able to hold the key, but then what do you need after that? And um, for that, I'm probably gonna do a part two because this is already close to a 25 minute video. So I've shown you, this is almost all of the commercially available impressioning tools and then the different iterations of mine. Uh, again, I'm a professional locksmith. Uh, I did this with the intent to appeal to both professionals and hobbyists. I've sold my tool to a couple of professional locksmiths. Uh, they have given me good feedback. Um, I have uh, sold one of these to Yos Vires. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. And, you know, he's got big hands, so these aren't ideal for him. But, you know, he did say it works. And, you know, coming from Yas, it's a pretty big compliment. It works. You know, he's not going to, he wouldn't lie. He wouldn't lie to me. So, um, Holly, if you're watching this, uh, one of these prototypes is for you. Um, you know, you, uh, you have given me a lot of, uh, advice and information to chew on when it comes to impressioning. And, uh, that's how I'm going to pay you. I'm announcing it here. So, uh, accountability is there, but anyway, uh, I'm going to end this video and, uh, stay tuned for part two, AKA what you need to get started and get finished in impressioning.